Okay. <laughs> Ready? We Ready. roll it. Okay, welcome to Surface Interval with Ina. Tonight I have this lovely shark diver all the way from Jupiter, Janelle. So, Janelle, yeah. Let's get into it. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell us about yourself. Um, so I'm Janelle Van Ruten. Um, I am a shark diver and I run expeditions now and um I've been in the industry for a long time. I started <laughs> Uh, almost 11. Actually, I started in 2013 was the first time I went shark diving. How did you start? Start it? <laughs> Where? Where? How, 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 how did you go into shark diving? Um, it's actually crazy because I've actually been obsessed with orcas my entire life. Yeah. Orcas, whales. Well, I got orca shark. <laughs> yeah, we switched places tonight. I got the tiger shark <laughs> and he's got the orcas and whales <laughs> 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 um but yeah actually i was obsessed with orcas my entire life um i actually was my goal was to work with orcas dolphins um from a very young age and uh when i went to college in hawaii i where in hawaii where where did you go to college in hawaii <laughs> i went to college on oahu Oahu? Yeah, Hawaii Pacific University. Nice. Yeah. So my goal when I went there was to work with orcas, dolphins in the wild, of course. Um, and while I was there, I was in one of my labs. And some people were talking about going shark diving. And I was like, okay, I'm afraid of sharks. I've always been afraid of sharks. I need to do this if I'm going to get over my fear. Um, and... Sure enough, went shark diving, and the first time I actually ever went shark diving was with Ocean Ramsey, and during that time, uh, I had told her that I had just gotten my naturalist certification. How did you meet, meet Ocean Ramsey? It was just by chance. I mean, but at that time, she was the only person running cageless uh, shark dives in Hawaii. Okay. Yeah. So you just met her randomly, and she took you... For shark diving? I met her through the people in my, my lab, yeah. They were the ones that were going with her and knew her and had rec told me, you're coming shark diving with <laughs> us, pretty much. <laughs> That's what she does all the time. Yeah. She just take people into into the shark world. And, you know, I know her. She's a good friend of mine and go yeah. with her a couple of times. So, yeah. So, you went shark diving. and Yeah. Um, and... Uh, Really, I just went to overcome my fear. And while I was there, I had told her that I had just gotten my um, naturalist certification with whales and cetaceans. And she's like, oh, that's great. Well, now you need to get it with sharks. And in my head, I was like, no way I would ever like get into sharks. Dolphins, whales are my passion. And uh, that day... I got into the water. We had a bunch of sandbars, and I had one sandbar swim next to me. I actually think her name was Bully, and I remember. I know Bully. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Bully's pretty I've seen famous. Her a couple of times. Yeah, she's pretty famous there, and uh, she swam right up next to me, super calm. And I remember that moment. That was it for me. And um, after that, I just became obsessed with sharks. You know, I started learning about their reputation how 100 million sharks every year are, are killed every year for the fin industry. And I actually dedicated the rest of my college career to protecting sharks. So. Um, wh wh what, wha wha what was it like to, I, I know, you know, you, you are sort of obsessed with, with cetaceans, you know, yeah. and, you have been ac actively, you know, doing some conservation work, especially for orcas in, in Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, you told me something like that. And w what specifically you guys were involved in, you know, um, when it comes to orcas in Hawaii in captivity before you obviously got into the sharks and w w um, what were the things you guys were doing? I know you did some <laughs> <laughs> some crazy yeah. stuff in, in orca, doing yeah. some protest and... 
uh, stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, I think my main focus for my college um, career was really sharks. Um, I did my senior capstone on protecting Florida sharks, which at the time I had never been to Florida. I just saw a picture of a shark named Snooty, who I now get to die with, and she has this smile. Uh, and she was kind of my inspiration for the entire rest of the year. But I think, but my side hobby, away from sharks in college, was empty the tanks. Um, and I, so the reason I actually chose marine biology in the first place was obviously I've loved the ocean my whole life, but I didn't know what I wanted to major in and how I could, you know, be in the ocean. And the night before I started uh, the university, The Cove was playing on uh, TV that night, and I had never seen it. And I had no idea what was happening with captivity. I had no idea, you know, what dolphins face in captivity, how all these dolphins were dying in The Cove every year. And I just remember being so pissed off. Like, that first day when I went to college, I changed my entire... Um, or I changed my degree to marine biology because I wanted to do something. So pretty much all of college leading up until Hawaii, I was really into anti-captivity movement, crazy, <laughs> and I was obsessed. Like every time I could talk about captivity, anti-captivity, you know, I would go to protests alone at SeaWorld. <laughs> I would drag my friends along. Um, I had like little websites where I was trying to educate people. And then when I got to Hawaii and started diving, I met my friends Natalie and a bunch of people there. And we started Empty the Tanks Hawaii. And uh, when I wasn't diving with sharks or diving in general, I was very proactive in the Empty the Tanks movement. And I was actually obsessed, like going, I was not sleeping. I was doing everything I could really to shut down this industry, at least in Hawaii. And um, yeah. And it seems like, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a movement around the world. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, empty the tanks or yeah. and the captivity, especially for dolphins and uh, orcas and, you know, things like that. And uh, on my last podcast also, Andre was talking about yeah. a project that he was doing it seems like you know right thing to do and uh, um and more and more people should be aware of what's going on behind the, the scene at a uh, sea world or a lot of these you know um tanks um so back to the sharks <laughs> right <laughs> back to the sharks because i love sharks obviously yeah. um when when did you see your first tiger shark was it in hawaii yeah okay how was that uh i was actually working for another company dolphin excursions on the west side of oahu so i would take people out to see wild dolphins and my crew knew because tiger sharks were always my dream shark so my crew knew if a tiger shark ever showed up i was in the water and no questions janelle's in the water she needs to see a tiger shark because i would talk about it all the time and uh the first time i saw a tiger i was with a, bun a pot of spinners and we were about to drop our people in the water and my captain says Janelle kitty kitty because obviously when you're with a bunch of tourists about to jump in the water with dolphins you don't want to mention a tiger shark and <laughs> she uh, was like your code name was kitty kitty <laughs> kitty yeah <laughs> that was a good one I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like no way no she's like get ready get ready get ready so I put on my stuff quickly and I'll never forget that moment I looked over the side and this massive pregnant female tiger shark was swimming right along our boat. And of course the guests started freaking out and they see me getting ready to get in. They're like, you're not gonna get in, are you? And I was like, of course I'm getting in. I've been waiting for this moment. And so yeah, I slipped in and I saw her briefly and it was a few seconds, but it was a big moment for me. I'll never forget it was so murky and I just see this big female pregnant tiger shark and I remember my friend also was in the water and she sent me photos from that day and I was like so happy it was a big moment for me for sure yeah I remember my first time seeing a tiger shark 
it's a long time ago. I don't know how old I was. I was pretty young, and uh, with a bunch of my friends, we were spear fishing, and I actually uh, speared one of, uh, um, I think it was a jackfish, and first a couple of silver tips came. Yeah. They were going crazy, and then, oh, you know, the one of the silver tip got the the jackfish I speared, and all of a sudden, from the blue, there's this massive. I wouldn't say it was like uh, the one that we see right now. It's not as big as that. Probably is a sabeto. Um, came just cruised around us and left. And I remember one of my, my friend who was with me. He got so scared. He just swim as fast as he came back to the shallow. And we were at the drop off. Uh, and he just went to back to back to the shallow part. And I I wasn't scared. I was like, okay, the shark clearly is not interested in in the fish so I kind of yeah. stayed on the surface I was a bit nervous to go down because I was alone and it was amazing I cannot relate to that feeling when yeah. you see something that big uh, and I honestly don't even know like back then what it is I know it's a shark but yeah. like kind of I don't I know what kind of shark, but I don't understand to the extent, you know, like how special it is or anything like that. So yeah, it's um, uh, it's amazing. And seeing a shark like that obviously had an impact on you and then you started working as, uh, as a sh- safety diver. Where did you start, started like working as a shark safety? Um... So I started, so eventually I became close with like Ocean and the girls at One Ocean Diving. And I was helping put on the beach cleanups with all of them. Um, So that was when, you know, Ocean kind of brought me in and she let me come onto the boat. And that's when I kind of first started learning the, you know, how to be a shark diver. I was watching the safety divers there and I was learning from them. Um, and I was going a lot, like pretty much every week, every other week, or as much as I could, I was on the boat just to learn. I wanted to learn about shark behavior because on my boat, um, there's nowhere better to learn shark yeah. behavior <laughs> than yeah. one ocean, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was amazing of her to like, let me come out and to trust me to like be in the water and, you know, it really set me up really for success and helped me a lot um and on my boat that i was working on dolphin excursion we would get sharks here and there so for me it was important to know what to do when sharks come you know because we would have sharks predating on dolphins during our dives and imagine i have 22 tourists in the water like somebody needs to know what to do and that's kind of how where my head was at during that time so any chance i had i was in the water with sharks that's amazing. <laughs> and uh, ha- have you ever worked with One Ocean? Or no, no, I wasn't like officially. Okay, like so yeah, you yeah, just. Part of I was just there as yeah. like a. Yeah. And then from there, like, how did you end up in Jupiter in, in Florida? Like, um, how does that happen? <laughs> so. I would live in Oahu. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> how did you end up in Jupiter? Um, I mean, it's a great place for sharks, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, after, I pretty much had to make a choice. Um, After I graduated and I was working on the boat, I had to make the decision, like, am I going to stay on Oahu and work here? Or am I going to expand and grow and move somewhere else? And my passion, obviously, like I was saying from the very beginning, was orcas. And it was my dream to live up in the Pacific Northwest with J-Pod. J20, yeah, my favorite orca is J27. I haven't tattooed. But uh, my dream was to be with the Southern Resident Killer Whales. Um, So I was like, okay, this is why I went to college. I need to follow my dreams, and I need to get there somehow. And some of my friends had just moved to Bellingham, Hannah and Craig from uh, Oahu. And so they um, said, oh, Janelle, you can come live with us if you want until you can get on your feet, whatever, whatever. So it was perfect. So I ended up moving to the Pacific Northwest 
And uh, fortunately, I got to work on a boat in British Columbia with the orcas. Um, it was just kind of like a fun thing. I would go on the boat as much as I could, kind of like one ocean uh, on weekends, days off from my job. Uh, I was working at the North Face at the time. Uh, and then I would go on the orca boat. And I was living the dream. <laughs> but there wasn't a lot of money in that. And I figured, you know, I went to college. I should probably get a real job. My parents were like, you need to, you know, get a job. And then I went to work for Tesla. And I was... Everyone was very proud of me. Yes. <laughs> I know. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. And it kind of went a along with my ethics, I guess, and of like an environmentally yeah. friendly yeah, company. And Elon Musk was new at the time. And I was excited to work uh, with Tesla. And it was a really cool experience. And at least I learned that that wasn't for me. It was it was hard, hard work. Um and then after a year or so working at Tesla, I uh, was at work one day in the showroom and I see someone calling me from Florida and I answered and it was my boss now, Bryce. And he's like, hey, is this Janelle? And I said, yes. He's like, hey, I, I heard you know how to work with sharks. You want a job? And I was like, Yes, I'm like crying because at that time I wanted out so bad. I didn't want to live there anymore. I had been trying to manifest something in my life. And uh, he kind of called at the perfect time. Like I was ready for that change and to get back into the shark industry or diving industry. Um, and so, yeah. And then that was in February 2019. And... I had said, I just had made up a random date when I could be there. I was like, hey, I can be there in April. And he was like, oh, you know, that's too late. But when you're here, come to me and I'll see if I still have everything. So I was a little bit crushed, but I was still going to go to Florida no matter what and try to get this job. But uh, when I did get there, Bryce was amazing, sat and talked to him. And he gave me the best job that I could ever ask for when I was there. He was like, I really like your story. You know how to work with sharks. You're comfortable in the water. My crew really likes you. Um, I want to help you out, and I want to hire you. And the next day, he asked me to come to work, and I started working every single day. I just, you know, I was thrown in the water with the sharks, and it was completely different from anything I had ever experienced. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen how you guys <laughs> and, and, yes, definitely, Florida, like the sh the shark diving, is very different. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I I how do I say like as a safety diver, like in Florida, um, the way you guys do it, um, tell tell me a little bit about like how how can you be like so good at because i've seen you working and all, all some of your colleagues like you know i've seen john yeah. like he's yeah. he's so good underwater and and i learned a lot from you guys as well when i was there um and someone who is like new to industry or someone who's want to be like like what do you think the things that you have to pay attention when you are in the water working with bull sharks you know like especially you know, like, wha what are the things that you, you look, you know, because there's sometimes 20. I remember that day on my birthday, I think, when we we went for, for shark time, there was uh, at least 20, 25 yeah. bulls or something like that. Uh, with, s with reefs and uh, with Caribbean reefs, right? Yeah. And, yeah, with multiple species, like, w how, how do you manage by yourself in the water, taking photos, uh, you know, managing the sharks and same time giving safety and like, what are the things that you guys look? Because I thought it was crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> I think anybody that comes out, like even people in the shark industry that see what we do, I it's crazy. Like, <laughs> but honestly, um, this is too. Like, I always people always ask, like, how do you become a shark diver? And I think the best thing I can say is patience. Um, the sh you know, the number one thing is being comfortable in the water. Like I said, when I got in, I was 
like oh my god I was kind of thrown in and I ha- I was not used to sharks in my face and sharks being fed so it was really different but I think the number one thing is patience so obviously you need to be comfortable in the water um, you know the sharks teach you everything you need to le- know eventually you know and if you're comfortable in the water and you're alert in the water most important um, from there with patience you can learn you know how to be more alert how to learn their behaviors eventually you get to the point where you see a shark come in and you know exactly how it's going to act and when you can feed and when you can't feed you know um, some days you can't feed at all and some days you can feed the whole time you know to keep you have to feed the whole time to ke- if you want to keep the sharks um, but I, yeah I think you know what we do with one person in the water taking photos safety diving and feeding all together it comes with time like I wasn't comfortable in the crate for a year and I always tell people again patience watch the sharks learn the sharks before you even touch the crate or get near the crate from there you can get on and then you can start learning the shark's behavior before you have (laughs) um you know the shark you know are taking photos or yeah like (laughs) yeah about (laughs) photos you know you're very you're very good photographer and um you have taken some really amazing photos and videos yeah um thank you uh, <laughs> and um i mean i do that also but i'm not like i'm just good at filming using my camera and i just video and i give to sorry and he does all the editing um uh, thanks for that <laughs> um but you know like and i know a little bit about you know like so I'm very comfortable in the water. Yeah. And we spoke Super about this, you know, like yeah. we I also get asked this question a lot, you know, if you want to be a good photographer, like, oh, what what's the setting you use? What kind of camera you use? And things and people think it's the camera or like you no. can have a a GoPro or yeah. a very basic setup of or you know, with camera and but I would say <laughs> you know like understanding the shark especially yeah. if you're working with large animals yeah <coughs> you can only be a good photo videographer like yeah. if you're comfortable in the water and understanding yeah. Yeah. the sharks and where to position yourself and yeah. things and and i think yeah what do you think about that you know like do you about like yeah about i th- being a good photographer what are the qualities that you you need to have like you said um being aware, alert, and not just looking at your subject, looking behind you as well. That's really important. You know, a lot of people uh, get really tunnel vision when they're taking photos, and that's the worst thing you can possibly do, especially when you're in the water with sharks, you know, dolphins, whatever. Maybe you'll miss something behind you, but uh, to be a good photographer with sharks, you need to be alert, and you need to always be watching your back. You know, I, I've worked um, Cat Island in the Bahamas, and I had a bunch of photographers, everybody out there with big cameras. And, you know, we tell everybody if we tap on the tank, that means there's most likely a shark behind one of you. And everybody's out there with their big camera rigs, and we're tapping on our tanks like crazy, and everyone's still so tunnel vision in their cameras. Meanwhile, they have an oceanic white tip coming up behind them because they're not looking around. So I think it's really important to stay alert and always l- watch your back and don't only focus on your subject, the shark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I agree 100%. Um, photos and videos and, you know, like this is a, a good good tool to, to educate people, um, you know, about sharks and how beautiful they are and stuff like that. And... Florida is a very interesting, I don't know if you want to touch the subject, but f- when I was there and I heard from, for example, recently was Zimi, uh, yeah. you know, filmed some of the shark fishing tournaments in, in Florida and stuff. And wha- when I was there um, last year, I'll, you know, everybody was talking about, it's super interesting because you guys, sh- the shark fishermen, 
Yeah. In the shark diving community, they both go out on the same dock and you kind of coexist, but obviously the fishermen don't like you mm -hmm. and probably you guys also don't like the fishermen. So uh, you, I don't know if you want to give some context of how the shark fishing in in Florida mm -hmm. or in Jupiter or like in general, like what was the extent that is happening? Because from what I have seen, it's crazy. Yeah. I've seen a shark that had a gunshot wound one of our dives uh, yeah. when, when we were there. Yeah. Yeah, Florida's tough, man. It's crazy out there. It's the Wild West. It's everything you hear about Florida is true. And people there, I mean, I don't want to say everybody, but a lot of people there, uh, fishermen, commercial fishermen, hate sharks. Um, you Why know. Why do they hate sharks? <laughs> I've obviously, like, I've heard a lot of different rumors, or not rumors, I've heard a lot of things um, <laughs> from fishermen and what fishermen have said, but I think it all comes down to they see sharks as pests. Um, they don't really understand the importance of sharks. Again, this isn't all fishermen. You know, I think there are a lot of amazing fishermen. I don't have anything against fishermen, but there are some that uh, are ignorant, I guess, and they don't <laughs> want to learn and anything that has to do with the shark is bad and then they see them as a pest because they're trying to make a living on the water and when they catch a fish you know here and there that fish gets taken by a shark right and it's annoying and they don't want to have to deal with that and so they see us shark divers feeding the sharks and they believe that we are bringing the sharks to Florida or uh, they also believe that um, we are the reason why they're coming up to the boats. But, you know, if it, it, I okay, if I'm not a shark diver, so yeah. I who have no knowledge about how things work, that yeah. kind of sounds... Yeah. It sounds like, okay, it's, it's true. You yeah. know, it can't happen because you guys are feeding the sharks. Yeah. And then the, the, the sharks come where the, where the fishermen are fishing. But... I know like all the Gulf Stream, you know, the current and all the nutrients and everything goes through like the whole area in yeah. Florida and Bahamas, you know, like all of the area is a, a very well known hot yeah. spot, you know, like, yeah. Uh, and yeah, t tell me more about that, uh, like about the, the how, how much diversity is there, like in that region. Yeah, so... Jupiter's considered, I um, like the shark capital, or uh, sorry, the fishing capital, like of the United States at least, uh, because w where we are in comparison to the rest of the state, we're so close to the Gulf Stream. Um, you know, whereas other states in Florida, you have to go so far out before you can get, you know, uh, to deep water. But where we are, we kind of have like a point, and it's the closest. And uh, we have this ledge, which we call the deep ledge. And where that ledge is, is where the Gulf Stream pushes north. So where the Gulf Stream is, uh, pushes, it brings, it pushes along that ledge, basically. And it pushes up all these nutrients. So, of course, you know, there's a lot of life there. A lot of fish life. And, of course, to keep everything in balance, we have sharks. Um, but it's an amazing, amazing spot for sailfish, uh, wahoo, mahi, um, or dolphin, they call in there, and marlin. So there's a lot of sport fishing there um, because of this reason. Yeah, I think one of the weekends that we went out, there's at least 700-something yeah. boats. Yeah. The captain yeah told me that every weekend, Every day, there's any given time, like seven, eight hundred boats yeah. out fishing. Yeah. And <coughs> what people probably don't understand is it's not just marlins and tuners and exactly. Uh, you know, whatever the sports fishing fishes that yeah. comes with all the o all the nutrients and uh, sharks also come. Yeah. Something that I really noticed as well. Um, uh, one day we dropped to you guys call it lemon drop or something and mm. th obviously the boat is drifting with the current and then the captain had a gps location that co he called lemon drop and then you drop there or the lemon sharks come up 
and then you drift and he would say okay like in i don't know five minutes we'll be past their territory yeah and then all the lemons by the time you hit the whatever imaginary mark they have they all leave <laughs> they instantly leave yeah so the the captain has to move back the back. board to the drop yeah and then you go in there they come up right away mm -hmm. So I think that tells, you know, like they're not there because of the feeding. Yeah. I mean, could be one of the reason. It's hard to tell, but it's yeah. not the only reason, I guess. Yeah, they kind of have their zone, especially the bull sharks. Like uh, a lot of our bull sharks, once you leave their little zone, they're gone. Um, but, you know, even let's say we are changing behaviors by feeding the thing is that the fishermen are also doing the same. So a lot of times they're chumming the fish, uh, you know, to catch them, whatever. So they're essentially doing the same thing that we're doing. They're chumming the fish, which are also chumming the sharks. They're using the same bait we use. So it's going to bring the sharks up. And imagine 700 boats chumming. Of course you're going to attract sharks. And sharks are really smart. So eventually they learn over time, you know, this boat is going to catch me lunch. And then if they don't have to put out the energy they do uh, or have to put out extra energy, why would they? They're going to learn if I sit under these boats, I have an easy meal. And so I think over time, uh, sharks are adapting and they're learning a boat eat means an uh, easy meal. And whether or not our boats are out there, the sharks are still going to do the same thing, you know. So the fishermen are trying to shut us down. They're in the progress of trying to shut down shark diving. But the thing is, if you take out all seven of or eight or however many boats there are of us out there, the sharks aren't going to change their behaviors because now they're adapting and they're learning. So the problem isn't the shark diving industry. The problem is that everybody's doing the same thing and that there's so many boats out there. And sharks have to eat too. So it's kind of how yeah. I see it. So how many f how many like shark fishing tournaments happen in in florida do you know um so they had their first one uh, i guess now it's 24 uh was in 2022 july 2022 that was the first one they've had i believe since the 60s or 70s oh, wow. yeah. so it's coming back now yeah yeah um unfortunately i think shark tournaments um are coming back not just in florida but in other states in the gulf this year there was a tournament for bulls and tigers as well so i think they are sparking up again yeah that's kind of sad though and out of yeah. all the places i would imagine americans like someone from outside you know like yeah. who grew up in america like is the the most civilized country in the world and then you yeah. go there and then you see all these kind of uh things that happen in there which um, same with australia you know yeah <laughs> like same, same exactly. things and here on these little islands we try to protect them and uh i think bigger countries need to do uh their work yeah their, <laughs> their work, job their job uh, and um protecting not just sharks you know environment in general yeah um of course we love sharks and um yeah i wanted to i wanted to ask you about like um for me obviously shark diving started mainly oh, I, I was like obviously a recreational shark, shark diver and like grew up on this island swimming with sharks all my life and started a business and became very successful with with what i do but i'm always curious as a shark diver how is like okay the experience i can imagine is amazing like you know i know that because i do Absolutely. it every day but how is like when it comes to income obviously a lot of people watching this you know like would probably thing like you know how what's like the income is it livable income especially if you are living in jupiter or like some cities like that um apart from the fun like tell uh, tell me about like the income and the lifestyle in general what it brings to you yeah uh, <laughs> that's a great question actually i get this question a lot in my dms of people asking 
can I make a living being a shark diver? Um, I'm very fortunate to have a great boss and I feel like for the last five years I have been very comfortable. Um, but I, th I think it's easy to say, or I think a lot of divers would agree with me that being a shark diver can't be your only source of income. Um, yes, you can live comfortably, but if you, <laughs> <What? laughs> no, <Nah, laughs> nah, you can live comfortably, but for sure. But I think you also have to have a side hustle <laughs> as well. Yeah, uh, for sure. Like most of the people I know in this industry have another side hustle, whether it's creatively uh, using your photos. It's not just shark diving, though. A lot of jobs, you know. Yeah. Like in and in the diving industry, I would say, like, it's very hard to um, <laughs> to make a good living. Because not just many people a do shark diving, so yeah, more people need yeah, to yeah. <laughs> go on the on these trips. And and one of your side hustle, you know, this is w like the point I'm getting is one of your side hustle is doing expeditions, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, you try to sell your photos and yeah. stuff like that, which is also s uh, some income, but uh, expeditions. Yeah, it's something very trendy now. You know, like every influencer on the on the instagram uh they want to do uh, uh like uh, expeditions and going to all these cool cool places and experiencing as a group and things like that and when i travel i like to go by myself and yeah. you know explore and meet people and like kind of i like more private settings yeah but I know a lot of people prefer to go on expeditions. Yeah. yeah. And I wanted to ask you, like, why, in your opinion, why do you think people really like that? People want that or people should be going on these expeditions. And, um, yeah, tell me about that because I'm always curious about that. Yeah. Yeah, I think there is a lot of competition right now especially with expeditions i do see a lot of um trips popping up which is amazing and i think everybody can or <laughs> yeah no i, I <laughs> yeah anyone, anyone anyone can yeah anyone can. anyone with some sort of following can can, can run, an expedition run an or expedition or at least yes. advertise for an expedition yeah um but i don't think not I guess not everybody can be like a good leader. And I think, you know, with these ex, there's a lot of amazing things that come from expeditions. For me, uh, I started with going on expeditions. So I used to go on a lot and that's kind of what inspired me. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, and that's what inspired me to run them because, you know, when I first started going on them, I was making a lot of connections and I learned you know how amazing these trips are a lot of my friends that i have now i learned or i met through going on expeditions and it's really something special yes traveling alone is special as well but if maybe if you're not comfortable going alone um or y you want to be in a group or maybe you ask your friends to go on a trip and they're not into the same things you are uh, I think these expeditions are an amazing uh, opportunity for people to connect with other people that are, you know, passionate about the same things they're passionate about. Also, you know, feeling more safe, you know, in, in numbers, if you don't feel comfortable traveling alone, you always have that comfort of having other people with you. Um, so I guess also, you know, like getting right information, if y I, yeah. I assume you yeah. wouldn't try to sell an expedition to a place where you haven't been or you yeah. don't have yeah. any knowledge or you don't have friends there. Yeah. So probably yeah. this could be like getting right information because if you Google or if on the Internet, you can find every S special locations, yeah. you know, like. Yeah. Um, so many different information when to go, what's the season like. Um, and. I've never been to an expedition, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, never. 
Um, but you host them. <laughs> yeah, I host them probably. I do expeditions <laughs> every day. Um, but, you know, like some of the expeditions, for example, Zimi did. Yeah. Uh, or Alex or a lot of our friends does. Yeah. Um, I noticed, you know, like people, they come like as strangers. Mm hmm and then through the expedition they do everything together they stay at the same hotel you know go diving together and talk about you know kind of transferring energy yeah. um or learning editing skills and you know spend yeah. and then they end up becoming lifelong friends and yeah and joining other expeditions uh together so i think it's it's a good way also to find like-minded people and yeah. finding good friends within yeah. w within the same or similar interests that you are interested in so yeah i i think i i get that um yeah but yeah yeah i think for me that was the most important part besides obviously the diving is the connections you make through these expeditions and the lifelong relationships like you said and i said um that come with it and you know who you go with like whoever your guide is whoever you're booking with they're kind of in charge and um, they're really showing you like how to travel well and how you can learn to be a better tourist, I think. Because like I said, like um, this is your chance to be a leader as a guide and this is your opportunity to show people like when you travel somewhere, you should always be with locals, right? Um, you should support the local economy. Y you shouldn't be... Like, for me, I like to go places first to feel it out, um, see if the trips are run safely, ethically, you know, putting the animals first, whatever it is, and then I'll run a trip, you know. And for me, like, one place that I've been running trips as well is in, um, in Bimini. And they're like a family there for me. And same here, now that I've been here, like, you guys are my family as well. And I wouldn't want to bring people somewhere where I don't feel like comfortable or where I don't really know the people or if I don't feel like people are going to be safe in the environment like I know all of you guys I know the island and I feel I strongly feel like I can bring people here and and run a successful trip um yeah I think that's the right way of doing it yeah. obviously and I agree I couldn't agree more with you and I've been actually one of the, that's why our slogan is dive with locals, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I always advocate and w whenever I go to a place uh, for, for you know, these kind of purposes, I always look for the local yeah. uh, operators or, you know, like who owns it and these are the questions I always ask people, you know, before I go. And it's hard to get this information. And yeah. I think if you are someone who would want to support uh, these kind of, you know, like um, local businesses and one of the good ways, you know, joining expedition. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good. Now, I guess I get it. So... <laughs> Um, I guess I get it. <laughs> a I little guess. bit. I would join one of yeah, the expeditions yeah. no, one day. Yeah. Um, and experience it by myself and yeah. then we'll see how, yeah. how that goes yeah i think too you had brought up zimmy like zimmy's a great example too because he does so much conservation um him and gail are amazing people to be around i've done his expeditions and i've learned so much from him you know and i'm going to australia with I both know. of them <laughs> i know uh, i want to for for a month um <laughs> jealous yeah i'm going going with, with them i know him and i you yeah. know like they were here for a few weeks uh with discover shark expedition and we had a great fun you know like yeah. we, we had a lot of fun and uh, like uh yeah so before like we end this okay yeah i i asked this question everybody and I want to ask, I think throughout every episode that I do on this podcast, I want to ask every guest where I had this question. I think you already know the question. I asked Andre as well. Yeah. Um, I the, like the, the, the pulling out a straw from a turtle, 
a plastic straw, you know, that moment changed yeah. the entire plastic straw industry. Yeah. Uh, the whale, s- you know, like in the 70s or something, they, they recorded the 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 singing of uh, humpback whales and everybody started relating them and it kind of changed the dynamics of how the, the whale killing industry. And I always want to ask, I will ask everybody, what do you think that moment could be for sharks that's a good question um <laughs> i i mean <laughs> there's no <laughs> nobody was able to give me uh, i don't know it's hard because people it, it's hard for sharks because no matter what people always are I mean, you want it to change, but I feel like people are somehow will always demonize sharks just because of their reputation, because of movies. And, you know, I think media has done a good job at showing or at least trying to show like the shark fin industry and that sharks aren't these horrible man eating monsters that we can coexist with sharks, Um, you know. They do tolerate us in their their environment, and you know if they were these horrible animals, they would kill more people every day uh, that are in the water, and they don't. Um, but what would turn it around for sharks? It's hard to say, honestly, because I I mean, listen, hundred million sharks every year are killed, and people see this, and a majority of the planet doesn't care, unfortunately, and it, it's hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> what would turn that yeah. you know unless i mean i don't even i uh, have an answer for <laughs> I that but i think i'm sh- gonna keep asking that question until we find an answer yeah, i think a shark would have to like save a human somehow <laughs> or like, like, dolph- <laughs> like, like dolphins, dolphins yeah. like yeah w- it's hard but i think that society moving away from this reputation that they have and like losing this fear of sharks that has been in um and great into our is that the right word yeah <laughs> and great into our minds is well, you supposed to know that you <laughs> what <laughs> you supposed to know that. yeah yeah i know <laughs> i'm like wait <laughs> <laughs> uh, but i think i'll say though like as a shark diver and as people that bring um people into the water and introduce people to sharks for the very first time like yesterday we had a lady uh, in the water with sharks. Oh, yeah. And she was, she told her husband she wouldn't do it. And she did it yesterday. She was not great in the water, super uncomfortable. But I, I had to hold her hand. You and held like her hand, yeah. you pulled her down. And her face, when she came up after that, her eyes were so big and she was crying. Like she was so happy. And, uh, you know, maybe that's what it is. I think maybe people just need to see sharks in their environment and see them for what they are and to really respect them and um i think if people could see the sharks w- the way we see them people would change their minds for sure i think it's sa- same p- pretty much same as andre also gave is like you change yeah. one person at a time yeah yeah exactly and it was uh, yeah i saw I mean, I didn't see it in the water. Like, I know she was happy. She was and crying, then w- when yeah. she came back on the boat, uh, she thanked me and she was, like, crying. Like yeah, yeah. And she was so happy. And then she was so happy that you got the photos. Um, now that you've been here, <laughs> okay, you've been here, you have seen the, 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 the tiger shark, especially the population of them. Yeah. Had multiple experience of them. You dove in Bimini, you dove in tiger uh, beach. Ti- yeah, Tiger Beach and Bimini as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Florida is your home, you dove in Hawaii. Like, wh- wh- what do you think, if you compare, like, uh, when it comes to tiger shark diving, what do you think, how the way we do it, and like, if you compare all the other experiences you had, like, the way you run your trips like safety wise Everything. yeah like sharks and uh, like what do you s- i mean i think overall 
they experience here tops like everywhere i think there's nowhere like here and i'm not just saying this because we're here like there's a reason why i keep coming back like i think in the last nine months i've i've come back three times and spent more and more time every time i come back um there's a reason for it um there's nowhere else in the world where you can swim with 30 to 40 tiger sharks you know and the bahamas 12 tiger sharks is too many 14 tiger sharks. yes it's amazing but that's a lot but here is special um you have the sharks over the reef beautiful healthy reef uh and there's nowhere where you can really free dive with sharks over a reef like this and or even in the blue um and it's it's incredible honestly like i've never experienced anything like this and the dive itself i think speaks for the itself like people that come here are amazed and they even say this is the best shark diving you know they've or as, at least like with tigers that they've ever seen and it's really really special um and not to mention the other things you can see yeah, as well mantas thrashers, thrashers uh silver hammer tips heads. white tips hammerheads everything. today today we had yeah uh, school well of the hammers. other day you had a school School I tell you, it was crazy. It was absolutely insane. Schooling hammers, like 50 plus schooling hammers. We got into the group and the hammers were circling us. It was absolutely insane. I've never... With tiger sharks. With tiger sharks. Like, come on, where else can you swim in one day? Threshers, hammers, and tigers. Oceanic white tips. Everything in one day. Like, there really isn't anywhere... And I think on top of that, I can say as well that like your the way your dive shop runs as well is incredibly organized. You know, people, as soon as they want to come to this island, everything is taken care of pretty much. Like once you get arrive in Male, your domestic flights are taken care of, your transfers are taken care of. All your gear is taken care of. You don't even have to lift a finger. Like, you get here, and the next thing you know, you're in the water with sharks. You don't have to, you know, where's all my gear? Is everything organized? Like, they take you right. You guys take, uh, you know, guess right to the dive shop. Everything is organized from the second you come onto this trip. It's easy, and um, everything just kind of flows, and it's amazing how well and how organized it is, like, Honestly, there's a reason why I'm running a trip here is because of how amazing, obviously, the diving is, but also how organized and um, efficient everything is. And also, on top of that, you have an amazing crew. Um, when you come here, it feels like you're part of a family and you leave here feeling like you are family. And there's a reason why, you know, people come back here and they want to continue to come here and they say, trust me, I'll be back because you come here and you're part of something amazing you're part of conservation um you get to witness like the magic of the ocean and you leave part of a family so yeah and one of the thing that when when i started the company i remember like when his son uh he's uh our manager now and i remember like you know we have a history, you know, we worked in, uh, in a resort together as well. But one of the things that we really, number one, was safety. We yeah. want to be the best shark divers yeah, in the world. Yeah, safety is another thing as well. Um, yeah. that's, that's like, okay. And then that's why, you know, we, yeah. we, we went and learned about behaviors. That's one of the reasons I invited Juan and Ocean here and, like, learn yeah. from them and teach them. And also the other thing is... Um, something very important to both of us when we were planning everything was like people have to come and actually see the beauty of our local culture, how friendly we are, and yeah. then they need to uh, stay connected and keep coming back and you know like build all this friendship and they need to feel welcome yeah uh, anytime and be part of the uh, like a shark family yeah. And I think the team that I have, um, they does incredible job. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously led by Hisan, Panda, Sarim, Ivan, you know, like always funny and like people love him, Goofy. Rome, 
uh, captains, everybody, you know, even and all the cats yeah. in the Thai <laughs> center, you know, like people. Um, yeah. yeah, Rolo, everybody, fantastic team, amazing. I cannot thank enough for yeah. for the team and yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why you coming back and many other people coming back and yeah. I for I didn't even touch on safety, so I'm happy you brought that <laughs> up because that was a big one. <laughs> <laughs> like the safety here as well like i think what do you think is different the safety how how is it different uh i mean i will say like the dives i've been on have been um i believe like the companies i've been especially my friends in the bahamas and you know neo watson shout them out bimini school center uh they also are incredibly safe like i've never felt unsafe but i think you guys all both follow like um i don't know i feel like you both just have an incredible crew like when i'm in the water with you guys i never feel sa unsafe i always feel safe i always know there's somebody watching my back uh which is important i see you guys i see your team always watching everybody's back always looking around tapping on tanks look you know like if there's a shark coming from above or whatever, I can tell that you guys are, like we were talking about before, very alert and aware in the water. And I think that's another big thing about, you know, being um, careful about who you're going out with because safety is a big thing. And like I said, like when I'm with you guys, I never feel unsafe or I always feel like someone's watching my back. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank and you. also with sharks <laughs> as well, like being able to handle the sharks and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, on that, I'm glad you feel safe. I'm yeah. glad you're coming back. <laughs> Thank you for joining uh, my yes. little surface into a podcast. And Thanks for having me. Yeah. Good night. Boop. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>